We want you to know that you were source energy before you came into these bodies and that that source energy part of you still exists non-physically and that that source energy part of you is aware of you here and now and in all moments in time. I've heard Abraham talk before about if you're not letting go of beliefs in every moment, then you're not moving forward, you're not evolving, you're not experiencing this. Well, it is a sentiment that we have because beliefs are so much wrapped around what is. And if you are really a what is or believer in what is or, then you're not allowing yourself to focus forward. We may not be as specific about it as to say in every moment if you're not. We're just saying beliefs are old thoughts. Yes, patterns of thought. Beliefs right? are thoughts that you have been thinking. And every single thought that you have been thinking has an improved version. Yes. Every single one. I, I cannot help but extrapolate what you talked about with the teacher and the student to all of us, right? Yeah. All of us being teachers, all of us being yeah. students. Yes. And I think there is some... All being cooperative components to one another. Yes. Yeah. And or potential cooperative components. And I think you touched on something so brilliant there where there's often um, uh, a connotation that we as humans have of an imbalance of power of knowing with teacher and student. Just beliefs. the lexicon. Exactly. And I think... Sucky beliefs. <laughs> beliefs and that others have imposed on you. Think about it. Those who came before you, your mothers and fathers and teachers, they said a lot of things. And you heard them say them. And in a lot of what they said, they believed what they were saying. And because they believed it, they had a point of attraction. So their point of attraction caused them to demonstrate their beliefs at the same time that they were talking about them. Is it any wonder that they became your beliefs? Because they said it and you witnessed it, therefore it must be true. But when you give yourself the latitude to understand that people are creating their own realities and that beliefs are creations they are not assigned from some static standard this is always true Whew. then when you exercise your own ability to choose whether that's a belief that you want to demonstrate in your own life experience and of course those who have come before you don't want you to prove them wrong because they want to be right but they also in most cases want your expansion and your joy so you're faced with choices who under what influence are you and if you don't even know that there's a source energy that is offering you a vibration, how could you begin to calibrate it? Because those who came before you have been constantly demanding of you that you calibrate to them. Can't you hear what I'm saying? Do you see my lips moving? What is it about this that you don't understand? Don't you know what I want you to do? In other words, there are hundreds of ways that they insist that you conform to what they believe. And you're just chomping at the bit. You just know that can't be right. That can't be right. That can't be right. That can't be right. And the wise ones among you just know it's not right and keep your mouth shut. You get a lot less grief. And those of you that know it can't be right and can't keep your mouth shut, you get a lot of grief initially. But ah, it's so wonderful when it's you get so it. It's so good. It's yeah. so good because in... In talking about the idea of being a teacher standing up in front of students or being in a conversation with one person, a conversation with 300 people, to be, to spark the interest of somebody else, you have to be interested, right? It's just to spark the interest in someone else. Now, let's break down what that sentence said. To have a vibration so active in me that it has the potential of activating the vibration in another. To have an idea so active in me because I'm synced up with source and therefore I'm a million times more powerful than one who isn't. To have a vibration so active in me that the probability of activating it in another is so much greater. That's true power of influence. And of course, you could never activate something in another that wasn't for their highest good. 
because you're hooked to the highest good before you have the power. And the very nature of, I find um, finding what and witnessing what lights people up is the best scavenger hunt of my life. <laughs> I think it's why I'm put on this earth. I think actually it's probably why we're all put on this earth to just be able to witness and experience and, and celebrate in that watching somebody who does what light you up because you yourself are actually doing what, what you just said is absolute. And so therefore, can you take it to the next level? Can you imagine how your inner being feels when you light up? Just the sheer act of lighting up means calibrating to all that you are and all that you have so far become. So far become. So far. So far. So far. To the best of my capability in this human experience, yes. To the furthest expanded current temporary reach of my ability. Because you're not ever going to get it done. You can't get it wrong. You never get it done. You can't get it wrong. You're not ever going to get it done. You can't get it wrong. And that's why we want you to relax in your incompleteness and celebrate it. Because eternity depends on you being willing to be incomplete. Because in the moment you believe that you've got it all, you shut down. You don't reach anymore. And that's when people feel saddest, when they're not reaching, when they're not letting themselves want. Yeah. So good. Yeah. And I, I, I think it's also why everything is a co creation because if I'm in a space where. Why? Why is everything a co creation? Because when I, when I have the, such a pure desire of wanting to see you do what lights you up and feel what lights you up, then I am in that space of what we all share at the place, which are all one source energy in a vortex where we are all connected on that but level, But let's be right? clear about this. Wanted or unwanted, you can light people up on unwanted things too. <laughs> what have you heard? <laughs> Nothing about you. But that's important to know. And you are influential beings. And when you get momentum going, because people already have propensities, they're already in a vibrational arena or genre or readiness. And so when you get hooked into something, but it's so much better to acknowledge the difference in lining up with your inner being and your inner beings therefore point of attraction on your behalf when you cooperate when you become a cooperative component to your own desires and your own becoming oh it's such a powerful point of attraction and when you use the term light someone up that's what you meant yeah I would love to take this conversation and talk a little bit about getting out ahead of it. Well, getting out ahead of it means being willing to take a break from what isness because it's exhausting while you reach for the freshness and the replenishment and the relief of the known alignment. Esther was walking around the other day singing, these are a few of my favorite things. And the song came into her mind because there were some not favorite things buzzing around her head. And she was swatting them away, but noticing each and every one of them. And every time she swatted one, more came. And it didn't get too far into it before she acknowledged these are a few of my not so favorite things, and they are becoming exponentially more. So she thought, oh no, I know what to do. These are a few of my favorite things. And she didn't pick the things from the song because those are dumb things. She <laughs> never understood why anybody liked them. She couldn't relate to hardly any of them. But oh, she's got a list of favorite things, favorite moments in time, favorite pieces of conversation with grandchildren and children and friends and favorite moments in time in what she's seen on the planet. In other words, when you get on that wavelength, these are a few of my favorite things, your inner being has collected albums of all of them. And when you decide that you're going to focus on your favorite things, your inner being will live stream them to you. Yeah. So good. Mm. Until you reach this new wonderful place, these are a few of my favorite things in the making. These are a few of my future favorite things. These are a few of my favorite things 
in you that you haven't even seen yet. These are my favorite things that are coming to you that you don't know about yet. That's what your inner being is doing all the time. Your inner being is looking at the vortex version of your favorite things, knowing that they all have the potential of coming into fruition and holding them as vibrational objects of attention while you relax and let yourself demonstrate them. And when you demonstrate them, the joy you feel is the joy of your inner being. So good. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I feel like so much of that, we're constantly gonna be influenced by the variety that we see around us, always, always. Let's say influence is good, but let's take a determined stance. I can see it. I can observe it, but I don't have to calibrate to it. Yes, a thousand percent. And if you're not trying to swat it away, you won't. In other words, if you're not trying to push it away, you won't calibrate to it. If you catch it early, you won't calibrate to it. If you don't have a discussion with someone else, you won't calibrate to it. And that's the getting out ahead of it that you were talking about. Not being guarded that it might come. But knowing what to do, when and if it does, and having your sea legs, knowing that you can deal with whatever's coming. You're flexible and resilient and solid and supported, and you know, you have knowing. It's, it's often when I, um, when I spend time with other people, I, in my mind, I've booked that time for them, right? We're get, I'm going to get together with good friends in the afternoon. And already that time period, I have no expectation of what we're going to do, where we're going to go. I don't, it doesn't matter to me because I've already booked that What is time your expectation? We're going to have so much laughter and so much fun and so much love. So you have a vortex version, a generalized version, yes. which is often the most powerful version because when you get specific about what it's going to be, sometimes your memory of what happened last time is then activated and then you're swatting things away. So being general about that, it's going to be fun. It's going to be funny. We're going to have a wonderful time. New stuff is going to happen. Yeah. That's a good stance. So from that framework, if, you, if we've set that up, it allows me to be the student. It allows me to be the teacher. It allows all of us to be a, a spectrum of all that we are in any given moment. Perfect right? words. It's so lovely to know that you are both, both the giver and the receiver, both the teacher and the student, both the questioner and the answerer, both the problem and the solution. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And I, being open to being played as the multifaceted instrument that we are allows us Perfect to create harmony again. with everybody sitting yeah. at our table, right? Yeah. And everybody who's yeah. witnessing and observing. And yeah. there is no, uh, there is no flat or sharp chord that can't be synthesized and synergized into the beautiful symphony that we play together. Right? And have you noticed that the more notes that are playing, the more that is true? Mm. There's only two notes. Sometimes you can tell if they're not in harmony. But the more you get going, now you've got jazz. Doesn't that allow us to allow people to be the notes that they are in any given moment? And isn't that what pure alignment is? Yes. So, good. so good. Thank you. Really good. Yes. Really good.